All right, today we're going to dig into a real tech mystery. It's the story of a day when a huge chunk of the internet just blinked out of existence, affecting millions of people. But here's the twist. The bad guy wasn't some elite hacker or a secret government agency. Nope. The culprit was much, much smaller and a whole lot weirder. Yeah, you know the feeling, right? That web page that just won't load. Your favorite app with that little spinning wheel of death. You immediately blame your Wi-Fi. Maybe you go and reset your router for the 10th time. Well, on this particular Tuesday morning, it wasn't you. It wasn't your internet connection at all. A fundamental piece of the internet's backbone was having a total meltdown. So of course, everyone's mind went to one place. An outage this big at a company like Cloudflare, it just screams cyber attack. But it wasn't some shadowy group of hackers. It wasn't a nation state trying to cause chaos. The villain of our story was something that was supposed to be completely, totally harmless. Now, for the engineers on the ground, the first clue they had was just bizarre. The internet wasn't completely down, it was flickering. It was blinking on and off, in and out of existence, with this weird rhythm that made absolutely no sense. So here's a quick look at how it all went down. It all kicks off at 11.05 with a tiny, totally routine database change, the kind of thing that happens all the time. But just 15 minutes later, bam, the entire network starts lighting up with server errors. You know, the bad kind. It then took engineers over two hours of frantic digging to figure out what was going on, and another hour after that to finally get things back to normal. Okay, let's really dive into this, because this is where the story gets super strange. The network wasn't just broken. It had this weird five-minute heartbeat. It would crash, then it would recover. Five minutes later, it would crash again, then recover again. This bizarre pulse was the biggest clue they had, but it was also what was confusing everyone the most. It turns out, every five minutes, the entire system was basically flipping a coin. See, that routine database change hadn't rolled out to every single machine at the same time. So, depending on which database server happened to answer a really important query, you'd get a totally different result. One was based on the old, safe permissions, and the other was based on the new, problem-causing ones. And that single query was responsible for building a super important configuration file. If a good server answered the call, a perfectly normal, healthy file was created. But if a bad server answered, those new permissions made it see the data twice, which in turn generated a file that was suddenly double its normal size. So what was the result? Well, if the system generated the normal file, everything worked perfectly. The network was healthy. But if it generated that oversized file, a core part of the system would just totally panic and crash, taking the whole global network down with it. For hours, the health of the internet was literally being decided by a five-minute game of digital roulette. So after hours of chasing these digital ghosts, the team finally found their suspect. And it wasn't some complex bug in the code or malicious attack. The entire global outage, all of it, was being caused by this one single bloated file. And this culprit has a name, the Bot Management Feature File. Now, you got to understand, this isn't just some random log file tucked away somewhere. This thing is absolutely critical. It's the blueprint that a machine learning model uses to look at every single request that flows through Cloudflare's network to decide if you're a real person or a malicious bot. So let's just walk through that fatal chain of events one more time. Step one, a database change that seemed totally harmless makes a query see double. Step two, that query builds this critical feature file, which is now twice as big as it should be. Step three, a core system tries to load this massive file, it hits a secret limit nobody knew was there, and it just panics. Game over. The whole thing comes crashing down. And here it is, the breaking point. The number was 200. Deep inside the core system was this invisible, hard-coded limit. It could only handle a configuration file that had, at most, 200 features in it. The normal file? It had about 60. No problem. But that bad file, the one with all the duplicated data, it blew right past that 200 limit and the system just had no idea what to do. You know, when a system that's this fundamental to how the internet works breaks, it doesn't break by itself. The failure of this one little component set off this massive chain reaction, toppling countless other services just like a row of dominoes. Think about it like this. The core proxy is kind of like the main artery for the entire network. And when that artery gets clogged, everything that relies on it for that flow of data starts to fail, one after the other. And it turns out, a lot of things relied on it. The blast radius was just huge. Data storage for all kinds of apps just stopped working. 
You know those little I'm not a robot boxes you have to check? They disappeared, which meant people couldn't log into their accounts. Even Cloudflare's own customers couldn't get into their dashboards to figure out what was going on. And the biggest irony? The bot management system, the very thing at the heart of all this, started flagging everyone as a bot, blocking legitimate users. So after the fire was put out, the real investigation, the post-mortem, began. What can we all learn from this? To their credit, Cloudflare was incredibly open about what went wrong, and what they admitted to reveals some really deep truths about just how fragile the modern internet can be. So, what did they own up to? Well, they admitted that the database change was a total blind spot, that a file this important had no basic safety checks on it, like, hey, is this file way too big? They admitted their core system panicked instead of just handling the error gracefully. And maybe the most important thing of all, they said they just trusted their own internal systems a little too much. And all of this led the community to ask a really, really sharp question. Why in the world was a feature designed to block bots put in a position where, if it failed, it could take down literally everything? It was a fundamental design choice that accidentally created this massive, hidden single point of failure. And that's really the heart of the story. You can't just call this a bug. It was a failure of imagination, a failure to envision all the weird, unexpected ways that these incredibly complex, interconnected systems can break down. No single person messed up here. Instead, it was a whole chain of perfectly reasonable systems, each with its own hidden assumptions, that just happened to line up in the worst possible way to create a global disaster. And that really leaves us with this one powerful idea. The internet that we rely on every single day is built on a massive tower of these hidden assumptions. Assumptions about how data should look, how files should be sized, how systems should talk to each other. And this outage was just a huge reminder that when just one of those little assumptions breaks, the whole tower can come tumbling down.